Hello, Dr. R. Michael Fisher here from Canada. Hello to all you out there on the other side of the world. Um, thought I would just do this short video as an introduction to a colleague and friend of mine, um, Maria Kermar, and our history very briefly and this latest book that we produced that uh, Maria really initiated. I came in and wrote a little bit with him. I'll do a little short reading at the end just to give you a flavor for what this book's about. But really the topic in a way in this very short video, to me, I was thinking, what is the sort of summary of it? It's that, you know, what happens when you bring a, a police officer, Maria, a long career of three decades over plus in Bhopal, India, mostly, and me, a philosopher, thinker, educator over here in Canada, and we only met on the internet. We met through another colleague, uh, Dash Thuba, who has written a lot of work about fear. That was my specialty. And then we come together and we've got the, suddenly at some point a few years ago, um, four or five years ago, I believe, uh, Mario came on the scene and was starting to have conversations with both of Dash Thuba first and then myself. And then within a very short time, we ended up writing some books, which I'll briefly show you about. This is our fourth project, this book. Um, the human hidden dimensions. <clears throat> so bring a philosopher together with a police officer, really, it turns out that um, Maria is not just a police officer. He is a, uh, a law enforcement person. He's interested in the history of law. He's interested in the theories of law. He's interested in myth as much as psychology, as much as sociology, as much as politics and religion just to name a few of the subject areas. Well, that fit perfectly with myself. When I started studying fear in 1989 as a specialty and then into fearlessness and was interested in that relationship between the two, uh, I was also looking across disciplines. Uh, I do not restrict myself to any discipline, even though I'm trained as a PhD in education. I really thought that fear was such a broad concept in its relationship to our evolution as a species our cultural evolution and how we form organizations, and then how do we manage those organizations and institutes that we so-called might call civilization, et cetera. What is the nature and role of fear and all of that? Well, that brings Maria and myself, Desh Sub, as I say, is the third in the triangle together to do this thinking and publishing, as I say, of four books. So to back up the book, behind this hidden dimensions, where it came from was a set of essays that Maria put together in response to a book I initiated with him. And it was really on looking at why people in the West and the East uh, are not so interested in the notion of fearlessness. And I have documented that. Now, of course, there are people that think fearlessness is great. There's other people that think fearlessness is, is really evil and it's the problem of humans that are not afraid enough we might be able to manage them a lot better if they were more fearful. Well, that becomes a very interesting philosophical topic. And it's really about how do we see the human nature? What is the nature of humans? And that's really what this book is about. Our fourth one is, you know, what does it mean, this notion of human existence? And therefore, we have to look at what is our human nature. So Maria, as this police officer, who obviously writes many books, he's multi-published, writes in magazine articles, newspapers, has this broad spectrum. And the more I've written with him in the four years, I've learned so much that he he's just a lifelong learner and always was in pursuit of knowledge, still is to this day, no doubt, as some of you probably know him well in that way. So just backing up, um, the book that he also initiated was uh, India, Nation of Fear and Prejudice. Obviously, that means a lot to him. Uh, he's from India, Desuba here is from Nepal. Uh, so that was the Eastern influence, and then myself from Canada. And uh, really, he, he called it The Race of the Third Kind, which is a really interesting book. Uh, it's all three of us writing essays. He starts it, Maria, and then we respond in our perspectives, particularly from the fear perspective. And just then the last, the one that was even before that, that started our series of work, because I started this one, uh, fear, law, and criminology. And the reason I did is because when I was connecting with both Maria and Desh Suba and realizing that we have these overlapping interests, we also have our differences uh, of opinion as well. We've learned to bring our differences together and unify some kind of voice 
And I think it shows a, a real good tolerance and open-mindedness of good good scholarly minds. And, and that really enriches, I think, the world is so divided now by oppositional voices. These are all books that uh, promote a, really an integration of differences, sometimes very strong differences, but we also found common ground. Uh, and the common ground here was really kind of biographically is, is that I began realizing when I was talking with Des Suba uh, over the years, he lives in Hong Kong right now, but he started writing about fear in 1999. I started in 89 and we really focused as a real frontal assault really to, we weren't happy with the way our world was managing fear. Okay. Well, that's maybe nothing new to you folks in law enforcement, but there was a couple of things that made me think about why to do this book because Desh Suba, his full-time job, right? Day job has a family and kid he has to support in Hong Kong, he's a he's a security guard. Okay, interesting, very different than me. I, I'm totally more the artist, the philosopher type. I don't come from that background. And then, then when we met Maria, here he is, is, you know, he's been a police officer and pretty high levels of police officer in all his career. And I'm going, wow, I'm dealing with two guys that are hanging out in the world of law. So that all became interesting even connecting with at least two little bits I'll give you very quickly in this short video. Two bits in my background of research. I remember going to this conference of police officers in Vancouver, Canada. It was back in 2005. I just finished my dissertation. I was really interested in the culture of fear and how it works within societies, how we're going to manage that. This was before 9-11. Actually, I guess it was after 9-11. That's right. But I went to this conference in Vancouver and it was all police officers. I was one of the rare people. There was a few people from the, you know, the judges. There was a few lawyers, a few public, but I was the educator. And I wasn't invited. I just went as a guest, uh, not even a guest, really, just my own. And when I started listening to one of the messages by the superintendent of the police force for the whole city of Vancouver, which is a huge city in Canada, relatively, and this is what he's, I remember he said this. Uh, so back in 2005, he said, you know, problem with policing is not necessarily all the crime. He said, that's, that's one thing. He says, for the most part, we can actually handle that as a police force and, and as a institution of law enforcement. He said, the real problem is, is the fear of crime that goes with it. And, and I guess, like, oh yeah, right. What's the bigger problem? That's the one that they have as a police force, it just takes so much energy. It takes so much distraction from so much of the work that they are trained and want to do. So here was uh, really the whole criminal world, the police enforcement world, the law world, starting to become more and more interested in the role of fear. So that's another reason that Desh, myself and Maria have come together. We wanted to explore that over the last few years. The other thing I really liked in my research that always stuck with me as core that I think led me to keep staying interested in law and its history and its practice was this idea, at least in the Canadian North American scene, so I don't know about the rest of the world, I'm, I'm sure it's probably very similar, the very foundation of law and, and actually swearing yourself in to become a police officer, for, for example, or a judge, it, this is what the, the research showed me is that they have this phrase, at least again in North America, is you're willing and you're committed and you're honored to do the practice of law and law enforcement under this premise of without fear and prejudice. This is really the beginning of a modernity, of a, a modern world of some kind of order, institutional order that was based on this higher principle. And I go, well, that's the principle of fearlessness, without fear, without prejudice, and to commit to that. And of course, you know, you can commit to it. That doesn't mean you know how to practice it. Okay, you may know a little bit, but how depth, how much depth, right, is in the knowledge and experience that you can bring and knowledge that you bring in your training as well as law enforcement officers, as an example, never mind judges and lawyers, about actually understanding human nature related to fear and fearlessness, so-called this without fear. What does that mean? So that becomes really the, the, the whole premise behind the work with Maria, 
Um, so he wrote these essays first, and it came off of this book, um, ones that were not finished. We sort of had this great dialogue in this one, and there was much writing. He said, I want to write another book. I have so many more things to say. And I said, OK, you write it, and then I'll respond to it. And that's where this came out. So I'm just going to read uh, one page to finish this short video. And this is really mostly Maria's voice, um, but some of mine. And it really gives a flavor for the essays that are in this book. I think there's 13 or so of them. Nursing unwanted fears and ever inevitably, sorry, blocks the pathways to empowerment. Big word for Maria. This kind of situation automatically leads to learning deficiencies because of self-understanding. Negative consequences appear in the form of disappointment, enmity, stress, lack of self-esteem, which in turn worsen existential issues. Hence, cultivating fearlessness attitude helps clear the blocks which obstruct empowerment. Positive empowerment refers to instilling the spirit of fearlessness or realizing abilities and potential. Negative empowerment is all about how toxic fears and learned helplessness are handled. Self-empowerment means making life choices fearlessly in a calculated manner. So that's mostly his voice, um, obviously influenced a lot by my work and some of Desh Suba's work. And then I thought I would just read one or two definitions at the back of the book, because we, him and I and Desh, we keep creating this different language uh, for fear, because we believe that's part of the education of a, this new fear for the 21st century, a new education. Just one of the definitions, uh, two of them maybe. Defense intelligence. This really comes from my early work of studying fear. One of the many strands of basic intelligence in all living things utilized for protection is its living integrity. Fear is essential to understanding that integrity of defense. Wow, okay. And then we go on to talk about that, you know, understanding fear, we have to understand the epistemology of fear, one of those philosophical terms, how do we know we know what we know about fear? And how will we be able to assess it? So no easy assumptions here many new premises we bring to this work. Um, I look forward to hearing more from anybody who comments on this video and or to this book. Um, please take it out, check a look. Hopefully it'll be around for a while. Um, just came out last year. So thanks a lot. R. Michael Fisher from Canada is signing.